Nelson, alcoholic addict. It's not my real name. I use a pen name here at LL Sober. Uh, I had a funny conversation recently where I was talking to a guy about amateur wrestling, and the guy uh, had wrestled Division One in college, and I I love wrestling so much. Uh, I I just I'm a diehard fan of it. Wrestled my whole life, and so at the end of the conversation, the guy says to me, "Hey, did you wrestle in college?" And I immediately said, yes, I did. Here's the problem. I definitely did not wrestle in college. I had a nice high school wrestling career at a very good Pennsylvania high school. Had some offers maybe for Division three, maybe walk on some places, but I was not good enough to be a Division one wrestler. And so I did not. I did not wrestle at all. Uh, and yet it flowed right out of my mouth. Didn't hesitate at all. No restraint of pen and tongue. I just blurted it out. And my brain, it still can immediately reach for an answer and grab the one that makes me look the best. And sometimes it's like sugarcoating. Sometimes it's like sort of the truth, but not the whole truth. And sometimes it's a flat out lie. And that was just a flat out lie. <laughs> and, you know, since I've been sober, my ability to do that, it, it's very, it's much, much lower. Like I just don't lie nearly as much. Um but I still do. I it's still it's just right there. It's it's easily accessible for me. <laughs> and I gotta call myself on it, you know? And I think a lot about that phrase they say in court because I find it very necessary to my sobriety. And it's the idea that uh you have to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. They don't just say you have to tell the truth. Um and those last two parts, that's where the trouble lies for me. Um uh, most of the time anyway. Uh for instance, I, I remember um, one day, there there was a day where I, I told my wife I'd be home at 6 o'clock from work, and I got home at 6.30, and she had needed me home at 6. So I walked in, and she says, hey, what happened? And I said, hey, I'm sorry, there was a fire, there was a car on fire on the highway. And um, that was true. There had been a car on fire on the highway, but I drove right past it at 55 miles per hour. The whole truth was that I stopped at a gas station to get a soda, saw a friend of mine, started talking to him for a while, got a refill of my soda, listened to the radio a little bit, and then boom, the 20, 30 minutes uh, all of a sudden disappear, and uh, I'm a half hour late. The problem is I didn't count that as a lie when I got home. You know, I had 30 minutes to think about it, you know, and I still, I said it. But it's it wasn't a lie, but it certainly wasn't the truth. Um, I did it because it smoothed things over for me. It worked, you know, but I can't do that and stay sober. I just can't. Maybe some people can. I can't. I told her later that night, like, hey, I, I should have come. I should come clean. Like there was a there was a car on fire and traffic slowed down a little bit. But I was late because I screwed around at a gas station uh, for a half an hour. And so I'm sorry. And I try not to let it happen again. And then there's that last part of the, the court statement. Uh, nothing but the truth. Uh, I remember at rehab, there was a guy, he'd been in and out of sobriety for many, many years. So he had a tremendous knowledge of the 12-step programs and then like what worked and what doesn't in sobriety. He just personally hadn't figured it out yet himself. Um, so he pulled me aside. I had maybe two weeks uh, clean at that point. And he said some kind things and we were friendly. And so I remember he said something about enjoying hearing me speak and he said I was funny and then but then he at the end he said you know be careful though you have a silver tongue that will cause you golden problems and I remember like I don't really know what that means you have a sing silver tongue that will cause you golden problems like I don't think that sentence actually <laughs> makes any sense but at the time I understood it the same way I do today which is that um you know I can sp I speak pretty well and I can drop in a lot of jokes and fire a lot of words at you and make a word salad that looks real nice. Um, but I have to make sure that I don't use that to cover up bad behaviors and actions. And I, I do do that. Um, I, do, I think he made a good point. It remains true to this day. I really, really can't afford to um, use my mouth to, to cover up bad things, you know. And it's all a hustle to get out of the truth. And I will still hustle to get out of the truth. Um, and it's just, it's bullshit masquerading as truth. And so I guess that leads me to my last point. Um, and it's one of the most important parts of recovery these days. It's to thine own self be true. 
you know, that's, that's dealing with lies too. And those lies are the ones you tell yourself. And, um, you know, most of these little things I say, um, that aren't quite the whole truth, like they don't cause much harm to the other person. You know, it's not usually huge situations. I'm not lying to the police (laughs) about my whereabouts, but you know, um, it's possible to get away with these minor scams and keep my nose clean with other people, but not with myself. I'm in real trouble when my internal radar doesn't start beeping as I say something that I know to not be the whole truth. Um, so I need that voice in my head that says, hey, wait a second, not cool, man, not cool. That That's not really true. Because I know the minute I start lying to myself too, the minute that to thine own self be true goes away, I mean, that's bad, real bad, because I can talk myself into drinking and drugging again in a hurry if I'm in that place. And so I hate to I hate to even imagine where that road leads, but uh, <laughs> I bet it would involve my silver tongue causing me some very golden problems. Hey, thanks for letting me share.